that's great when we come to really busy locations we have pointed out this is not the best layout you can see all the traffic streaming past us which is at times blocking off the chargers but this is a very popular charger we're northbound on the m6 just outside lancaster we met up with rashid again he's the local service engineer we met up with him in ferry bridge and it's important for him to be here going to go into a little bit of detail about maintenance and servicing in a second but this is a fabulous location for us i'm dave this is dave takes it on well we do find it a little bit strange that we regularly come across grid serve chargers being serviced and we're here today with one and yet we don't meet very many engineers from non-grid serve chargers or the cpos anyway that's a by the by at the moment we've got the system down the engineers working on them uh, oh, it's coming back up again now. <laughs> Just three seconds ago, that was out of order. What happens is they shut a section of the chargers down, three, four or five sec uh, chargers. They take various readings, and then when they fire them back up again, each of them gives readings. One other thing I wasn't aware of uh, talking to the engineer, and that is that they can actually, the engineers can actually monitor how busy the site is when they come here. And the more popular it is, the busier it is, uh, the more servicing it needs. So these are driven by demand. So on this one, this is supposed to be one of their busier sites. Uh, I'd probably put this up with uh, rugby services on the M6 and also the uh, extra services on the M5. These are very, very busy. As I pointed out before, it's not the best location because all the traffic coming in has to go past the front. And I can imagine at really busy times, trying to get out of here with a stream of traffic coming in is not the best thing to do. However, it's really good news that the engineers do come out and look at these on a regular basis. They certify them and they're time driven and they're also uh, usage driven. So that's why you find these an awful lot more reliable than some of the other uh, CPOs. So we're here with 350 kilowatt chargers. And when we last talked to the engineer servicing these, he said that when they're building them in the cabinets, they put in either one or two power units. Some of these look identical, but they're only 175 kilowatts. These are the full 350s. So they got twice whatever they put in there. Now, all of the RID serves ones, they have the power going to two chargers. And that means that if you are charging and there's no one in the bay next to you, you can actually get a bit more than what they're rated at. Whereas if there's both bays occupied, you're likely to only get whatever they're rated at. And that, of course, depends on your charging curve and what car you're in. Because if you're in something like a Renault 5, although these are 350 kilowatts, your Renault 5, you're only going to get about 70 or 80. That's your limit. Same with a Citroen EC3, same with a uh, Vauxhall Frontera. These are all around about 40 or 50 kilowatt hour batteries, and they all charge just under 100 kilowatts, sort of 80, 90, 100 kilowatts. So an average driver here in something like a Renault 5 or a Vauxhall Frontera, uh, they'll be here maybe 20, 25, at the most 30 minutes, to get a good charge, but they're not going to get 350 kilowatts. We do get repeated requests for accessibility and disability access, and it's something when we're filming so much, it's easy to overlook. So we're making a special effort here because when we arrived, it was very much different the first time than it is now. So we're standing here in one of the green bays. Now it's not specifically designated as a disabled bay. Uh, there's nothing here that says disabled, but there are two main differences. First of all, every other one is blue and they're much narrower. So if these were full, you would find it very difficult getting a wheelchair between the cars. So that's the first thing. These are normal charger bays. This is a triple. Uh, it's a really very wide one. So anyone who pulls in here, there's loads of space for a wheelchair. The issue with all of these, everything's nice and low down so if you are in a wheelchair and you can wheel up here that won't stop you getting really close and these are in in reach that's your contactless so these i believe are really accessible for people with lesser ability lesser mobility uh, than someone like myself so hats off to them it's um i'm not sure if they need to label these disabled I think most people realize that they are different, 
and therefore they should leave these. And what we've seen with the various cars, they are basically leaving these alone. And only when we find the rest of the bays are full do they use them. And there's nothing here to say they can't use them. But they are, it's like priority seats on a train. If the train's busy and there's no disabled people about, you can use the seats. But if there are disabled people about, you wouldn't. And I think that's the case here. But this is a lovely busy location today. We're seeing loads of cars. We're getting loads of readings off the charges as well. So uh, we're going to do a little bit more exploring. Now, would you believe my son, who's the cameraman here, asked me to sit down. But at my age, I probably wouldn't get up that quickly. So you've got me standing. This was the extent of the charges when we came last time. There were six chargers here, all 350 kilowatts, and the bottom one was a disabled bay, or the green one, uh, and they were all 350 kilowatts, mostly CCS2, but we had two Chadamos as well. Chadamos here, 100 kilowatts. Since then, it's grown, it's just doubled. Same again. So we got another green bay, and then we've got another five chargers on top of it. So this is the expansion that we're talking about. So GridServe, uh, about a year ago, got this massive half billion pound investment into them to expand the network. And that's what they've been doing. So locations like this one, which, were, which are very, very busy, they've grown. And that includes places like Rugby and extra services, M6 and M5 respectively. So where there's a demand, they will grow the site. We've also come across so many brand new locations where they're just piling them in. They typically go in 12 just on the first installation. And Gridserve now, uh, on their website as of today, they're claiming over 1,400 chargers. Now, it's always a difficult thing. Is that the biggest? They're up against Instavolt and Tesla. Uh, and the answer is they're all much the same. The only difference with them is that Teslas are all ultra rapid, 150, 250s, that's it. Whereas uh, Gridserve have some of the old rapid chargers, 50 kilowatts still here, and also some of the fast chargers at 11 or 22 kilowatts. Same with Instavolt. On the Instavolt, they have maximum speed of 160 kilowatts. These are 350, so world apart. But well done, Gridserve. They are really expanding. And wherever you go, you're going to see these green chargers. You're going to see the green signs when you come into them. And it's a massive achievement that most of the motorway services now have a selection of CPOs, that's different networks, on the same location. But all of this expansion comes at a huge cost because while grid servers always been one of our favorites in the past, both for what they're doing, the numbers, the charges, the power, everything they're getting right, we've always complained about the price. 79p is not an acceptable price these days. So what's grid serve gone and done? They've gone and upped it once again. Now, it's not quite as bad as that. These, when we check them out, these are motorway services, these are 79 pence still. But on their website at the moment, they're now stating that some of their locations have gone up to 85 pence. And that puts them up into the BP Pulse and Shell Recharge and Instavolt, uh, absolutely rip-off prices, 85 pence. There's no justification for that whatsoever. My own opinion, this is something to do with the investment, the half billion they got. They want a return on the money, so they have to put the prices up. Hopefully, it's going to be short-lived, but there we really know. What they have said is that if you use the app, and the app's actually quite good, uh, we'll show that one in detail. We're going to do a separate video on that, how to use it and where to find everything that you need. Uh, but we, when we use the app, uh, we find that these are 79p and all chargers, even the 85p ones, are 79p if you use the app. So in a way, it's forcing you to use the app and contactless now becomes the exception. And I've got a feeling that's probably because there's a charge for, from the banks or the banking system for using contactless. Whereas if you use the app, you've got your details already stored in there. It's probably cheaper, quicker and easier for GridServe to take your money if they've got your details than if you use contactless. It's my own thoughts. We're going to try and put some of this to the test very shortly. Um, we'll come on about that because there's a big Everything Electric show coming up and I'm sure GridServe will be there. So maybe a good opportunity to have a chat with them. But in the meantime, 
big, big black mark for grid serve. 85 pence is really unacceptable these days, particularly when, and we'll leave a link to this down below. Uh, we were just the other day at Arnold Clark. This is a used car dealer. They do new ones as well, but mainly used. And they are installing at all of the showrooms uh, 150 kilowatt chargers. These are Kempower chargers, really nice units. And they are open to everyone. You don't have to have bought your car at Arnold Clark or had a service there or have any connection with them. Download the app, it's free. And then you can use these chargers. And if you do, whether you use contactless or whether you use the app, 55 pence. No memberships, no nothing, no deals, just 55 pence. And, and we come here, these are 79, but other ones we will find will be up at 85 pence. And that is where this has to come to an end. The uh, time spent ripping off people at 85 pence really has to come to an end. So we're gonna throw open a challenge to everyone out there. You have got much faster charging cars. These are the 800 volt architectures. So the, the Lotuses, the Porsche Taycans, Audi, e-trons, etc. Uh, and GridServe actually produced a top 10 list of the speeds, top of the list, Porsche Taycan, and that was 320 kilowatts, cracking speed out of these, which are capable of 350, and they got a total speed of 840 miles per hour. Now that's not speed of the car, it's adding 840 miles for every hour it's, it's plugged in. But it never does, of course, because you have the charging curve which drops off. But that's the peak time, and that's the important one. Uh, just uh, further down the list, I think it was an e-tron, then we've got Lotus Emea. And we had a comment recently from one of our viewers who had a Lotus Emea asking me where to get the best and the fastest charging. Well, on the list, the Lotus Emea, I think, comes third. And that came out with a 350 kilowatt rate, which is flat out for one of these, but they were only getting 750 miles an hour. And this shows the different architecture, the different rates these cars can charge at. Uh, so when they say up to 350 kilowatts, that's what they're meaning. So these are grid serve, 350, they can actually share power between them, so they're capable of a little bit more. But out there, we've got the Fastnet 400 kilowatt chargers, which are capable of more. We've got the Ionities 350, which are supposedly very powerful. And we've got other chargers out there, uh, like the one we found in Blackpool, 480 kilowatts. So there's a load of chargers out there which can easily, easily come up against these. So what we're going to try and find is there anyone out there who can get anywhere near this sort of rate. And just as a word of warning, don't make these up. When you look at the screens, you will see the charging rate and inside your car or on your app, you'll see the miles per hour when you're plugged in. We need photographic evidence, not I was plugged in, got a thousand miles an hour and 750 kilos. No, we don't want that. We want photographic or video evidence, but let's try and beat grid serve. There must be someone out there who can charge faster on a non-grid serve. We've got our footage. This is a very busy site. The constant traffic, nightmare on my ears. Uh, but this is a great site. We met up with Rashid again. Uh, we last saw him in Ferrybridge. I'm sure we're gonna see him again somewhere soon. Uh, it's like a family gathering once in a while. Uh, but this is great. So sun's out. We're gonna move on to another location, but thanks very much. I'm Dave. If you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Every subscription helps us and it will allow us to notify you when we launch the next video. So for now, I'm Dave.